Council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests. All in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free MyPlayFit app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids, right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment, it's the right thing to do, and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers.
Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for His Worship the Mayor? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. Welcome to this evening's council meeting. I open the meeting at two minutes past seven. I'll call for apologies. I believe we have one from Councillor Gossink. Are there any other apologies? Mr Mayor, Councillor Kerrison's on his way. He'll be okay. here shortly. And there's no other apologies. We move to item two, confirmation of minutes of the ordinary council meeting held on the 22nd of February 2022 be confirmed as a true and accurate record of proceedings. Councillor Onyazan. Yeah, happy to recommend it. Thank you. Find a seconder. Councillor Strout. Second, yeah. Does the mover and seconder wish to speak? Are there any comments, questions or amendments to the said minutes? If not, I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We move to item three, declarations of interest. Are there any? No. Move to item four, Mayor's report. Uh, items will be up on the screen. Lots of different things. A number of private citizenship ceremonies um, the department are now allowing to occur um, due to the backlog due to COVID. Uh, a number of different sports days. Another successful Joe's Connected Garden 10 year anniversary. Uh, plenty of AGMs, uh, etc. on the screen. Uh, today's Harmony Day event at the Northern Sound System, which was fantastic to see a number of our communities come together, uh, particularly in a COVID safe way, which I haven't been able to do for quite a while. Uh, I also attended yesterday via Zoom with Mr. Green, the National Growth Areas Alliance, Co Areas Alliance Congress, which I'll talk about in re uh, training and conferences a little bit later on, but all the items are there. Are there any reports of representatives of, com of council on other organisations? No, we'll go to reports by councillors. Councillor Marsh. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Doctor. I'd like to just uh, thank the community in uh, air for uh, attending the air community uh, meeting with my, myself, um, the, the two councillors from, from Ward 1, the Deputy Mayor and um, Cathy Jo Tame were, were unfortunately unable to, to, to come. They put their apologies in. But I, I really look forward to working with uh, the two councillors on some local issues, um, both with the incoming Nick Champion and also with the developer as well of, of that local area. So anywhere from sort of crime increasing to, to that new suburban area to design of, uh, of roads, but also through to uh, council in a uh, in bit of a learning of ticketing and uh, what residents shouldn't be doing uh, when it comes to obviously parking and parking on verges. So I think it's going to be a, a good sort of upcoming three to four months uh, working with the community along with the uh, A.B. Jennings and Council going forward and Nick Champion. So thanks. Councillor Norris. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to give thanks. I organised a Clean Up Australia Day event uh, along the windbreaks, uh, particularly at Elizabeth Downs. Um, I actually had quite a number of people turn up in, uh, to obviously help. We ended up with about 10 bags worth of rubbish. I think a good four hours worth of work. Um, so I'm really appreciative of that. Um, I also wanted to um, talk about the markets. I do make a habit of going to the markets that we have locally. So we've got One Tree Hill, uh, Blake's Crossing, and then the Craigmore South markets as well. Um, I think it's just important to sort of, you know, mention that, you know, these events are still community run. It relies on, you know, local stallholders and obviously the community and local people going to these events, which is why obviously I like to go there, get my friends to come along and, and promote them on my page quite a lot as well. So I think, yeah, we need to kind of get behind them so that they can continue to, to go. All right, thank you, councillors. We move on to reports, representatives, conferences and training programs. Uh, I attended the National Growth Areas Alliance 2022. Oh, Councillor Halls. You, Sorry, Glenn. You're interrupting yeah. the next report. What are you wishing to make a report on, councillor? I was put it on for the report of council. All right, quickly let you do that. Um, yes, I'd like to say that um, I attended the Eastern Park uh, Fundraiser Cricket Day for Pink Stumps, um, where they were raising money in aid of the McGrath Foundation. And um, they, go, they go out and um, have, it's mixed games and kids can play. And they, they all had a great time. 
um, and they played from about 10 o'clock until about 4 o'clock, I think it was, and it was it was really good uh, afternoon. And I'd just like to report that um, the Rotary Club of Elizabeth also um, did the windbreaks between Judd Road and Phillip Highway along Mon Main North Road there um, on uh, Clean Up Australia Day. Um, and um, they got about eight, uh, 10 bags, a couple of doors, a push bike, and about eight push um, shopping trolleys, uh, as well as a whole heap of other cardboard boxes and stuff that were, um, which is interesting. But I did note that uh, it's less rubbish on that uh, strip because they do that every year. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Halls. Uh, as I said, councillors, I attended the National Growth Areas Alliance 2022 Congress via Zoom yesterday with a number of staff, Mr Green and others. Um, I have my conference and training report, which I'll submit to governments, but just some highlights. The theme of the conference this year was Choose Your Future, Gridlocked or Unlocked. So as always, the National Growth Areas Alliance has a number of presentations from partners such as SGS Economics, a uh, presentation from Seoul Eastlake, uh, around growth and the issues that COVID has played around growth. There was representation from the federal government, from Senator Sarah Henderson, representing the Minister for Urban Infrastructure and Cities, uh, Minister Fletcher. Presentation from Andrew Giles, the Shadow Minister for Cities and Urban Infrastructure, uh, representing uh, the Honourable Anthony Albanese. Uh, a number of panel discussions around funding models, four pillars of election advocacy, uh, growth rates pre and post COVID, um, how communities are faring uh, in relation to jobs and what are the jobs of the future in our growth areas, what's the potential for infrastructure challenges, both uh, from a federal level but also from developer contributions and what that means across the country and also dealing with generally growing ethnically diverse communities as well and what that means for integration into um, wider services but also how to work with fast growing communities. And uh, when you look at some of our colleagues across the country who are going to be getting in the next 10 to 15 years the size of Canberra built in their local governments. Um, it's quite astounding and even our own growth uh, which is quite significant uh, and we are in the top 15 or so councils in Australia when it comes to our growth rate and the terms and population growth of our city. So a number of key items, there'll be a number of presentations that will come through and I'll make sure I can put them with my training and report item. We also were entered into a number of awards that the National Growth Area Alliance uh, has. I can confirm that we were the joint winner in the partnerships category, which is Building a Connection Award, and that was for our workers, Plainford Council, working with the state government in relation to community infrastructure for Riverbanks College. So that received um, the national award. And we also had one of our staff members, Mr. Andrew Smith, receive a leadership award in relation to his work around project development with the Playford area from um, infrastructure point of view and how he's been able to bring developers, gate government and landholders together. So he won the uh, leadership award, which was fantastic to see that we were able to pick up a couple of awards in the very tough categories, but also against some of the biggest councils in the country. So it was fantastic that uh, we were able to be recognised in this way. So that's my report from conferences and training programs. We move on to item eight, questions without notice. Are there any questions? No, move on to item nine, questions on notice which are nil. Item 10, petitions, Manapara Downs, speed limits and attachments on page seven. Councillor Coppins. Happy, happy to move that recommendation there. Councillor Coppins moved it. Do you wish to speak to that? No, does it find a seconder? Happy to second it, Mayor. Second by Councillor Anya Zans, do you wish to speak? Uh, no, thank you. No. Any other councillor wish to speak? If not, I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against, I declare that carried. Councillors, we move down to item 11, deputations, representations. We have a deputation this evening on the Elizabeth Vale Health and Wellness Park. Mr Jamie Chippett. Mr Chippett, if you can come forward, please. I know that you have done deputations before, Mr Chippett, but just to remind you, like I'm required to remind everyone that comes to deputation when you're speaking, you can take your mask off. You'll have up to five minutes. If you're still going at the four minute mark, you will get a one minute um, reminder. Um, you've got a couple of photos which have been improved around the park area, etc. cetera. Um, your time will start when you start speaking and don't leave the podium at the end as there may be some questions 
uh, about your deputation. So I'll hand over to you. Hold on, we'll just, just stop Mr Chibbert, we'll just make sure the microphone's on. It's on working now so you can start again. Right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm just bringing the point here with the Elizabeth Vale Health and Wellness Park. I've been heard that they want to spend $4.5 million on there, uh, $2 million from the state government and the rest from council. Uh, I can't justify that, guys. I mean, when you see all the cars that are parked up in the area there, I mean, that whole park area should be a car park. I mean, when you look at somewhere like Benitham Park down in Adelaide there, they've got a car park down there near the brewery there. Most probably holds three, four, five hundred cars. It's all done in quarry rubble, rubble, right? Now, we could do that on there at limited cost. Maybe a year or two later you can get curbing in there, a year or two later get some bitumen in there. You know, we've got to start thinking thrift with this council, not just go out and spend mega bucks on stuff. Uh, now, what you could do is put a footpath down the side there where the playground is, you know, spend another, you know, hundred, two, three hundred thousand doing that up. All right, so out of 4.5 million, you got four million uh, over. Now, in the area, if you want health and wellness in the park, you've got two nature strips, one going down Hogarth Road, one going down John Rice Avenue. Now, if you get three guys, two guys with chainsaws and one guy to help out, they run down any low hanging stuff, boom, they take off. Then a guy poles the stuff up in the little pile. You run all the way down the main off road, all right? Now, if you put, got three guys, do that in a week, that's two grand in each in wages. That's two, four, six grand, right? Add another four grand for fuel and cost, 10 grand, right? And put another 10 grand for council administration costs, could council really big on that, all right? So now you've got that, and then you get a couple of council trucks to throw all the stuff in the chipper and spread it all around. Then after that, you get another three guys in there. Again, they should be able to take a week to do that. At $2,000 a week, three guys, there's $6,000. And you get a guy that gets some stakes down there, he bangs them in, and he puts a pathway through there. Every 50 metres, you put a truckload of dolomite down there. Then you get these guys with a wheelbarrow, with a rake, with a shovel, and they rake out a path. When you look at that, that's maybe about 15 grand all up with wages and dolomite, because I know the price of dolomite, it's not there. So to do something simple like that, and you want to spend $4.5 million on a little bit of a park there, you're ripping the community off, guys. You're ripping us off. So, <clears throat> and uh, another point I'd like to mention is uh, Elizabeth Grove Primary School, you spent thousands of dollars doing all the trees up around there, all the paths and all that. Half the trees have died, uh, all the mulch has all gone out. It looks shocking. And then uh, you've got these signs up there, they're spending oh, thousands of dollars. Look at the sign right up against the fence. It should be out on the road near the curb. And, you know, the money they're spending on signs around the city is just crazy. And,. Uh, yeah, that's basically it, really. So, any okay. questions? Okay, Mr. Chief. Oh, hang on, I'll just put a few slides. Yeah, you've still got a good minute, 45, yeah. so. I'll get these slides. I'm not very good at all this, guys. Now, you've got like verges like this down, down the road from me. Look at them, they're looking shocking. Right? Kirk, look, no mulch over them. Tumbleweed, guys. Are we in the wild west of Australia, are we? I mean, look, tumbleweeds. Can't even put down a couple of uh, truckloads of mulch down there. That looks shocking, guys. So I'll pay my council rates. I want to see my area looking good. And you want to spend $4.5 million on a health and wellness park. You know, ding, 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 guys. So, yeah, I'm up for questions. Are there any questions for Mr Chippett? <laughs> Councillor Norris. Yeah, I guess my concern or what I'm trying to understand is how you came to the conclusion that the car park would only cost us 500000 so you're saying... Well, so if you put 100 tonne of quarry rubble, how much would 100 tonne of quarry rubble, when you look at the council, they've got the trucks, they've got access to quarry rubble, how much does quarry rubble cost a tonne? Yeah, but if we're considering that you'd have to essentially get rid of everything that's currently there, pay your employees, put in a car park, um, I just, I don't, I think your costings are way out, so... Yeah, yeah, right, so you want to maybe look at a few places around I mean, you're spending heaps and heaps and heaps of money 
on stuff that doesn't really need uh, to be spent like that. And it's all just political. And when you look at all the curbs and all the little parks around there, they've all gone to, yeah. Yeah. Um, so no one's doing nothing about it. And another thing that's really upsetting for me, I brought these issues 10 years ago. I mean, you've got CAD computer systems now. You've got all the technology to design things in the city. Why don't you start using them? You've got all the administration. You've got all the material. Start designing stuff. And then they're only like uh, a rough copy. Then you upgrade them. You know, they might need half a dozen uh, rough copies before you get the actual right one. But uh, you do the whole city Mr. like that. Yeah, Mr. Chippet, that's your five minutes now. Are there any other questions for... Yeah, I guess my only other one would be, look, you know, obviously it's next to a health precinct. You know, what health or wellness would a car park offer? You know, we, we, we're trying oh, to green don't, spaces. Don't you see all the cars out on the road? How would you like to be a neighbour and you've got a whole street load of cars up the road there for the last two or three years? Yep. I mean, they shouldn't be on the road. But Come also on, don't guys. Think they want it's a common car park. sense. They'd it's rather being park. genuine, using a bit of logic. Okay. That's all it is, guys. Logic. Oh, is there any other questions, Councillor Marsh? Yeah, thanks, Mayor Doppie. Can I just um, ask you, how important is um, green space, green open space in the City of Playford? Oh, heaps it's important. Important? Cool. Yeah. And how, how important is it to, to you as a ratepayer to leverage external funding? Um, as, as you said, as a, as a ratepayer, is it important to, to you to see that Council is applying and receiving external funding to, to go ahead with projects in the City of Playford? Oh, really the point it's getting bang for your buck mate right and the council or the residents ain't getting bang for their buck yep and just and what i'd like to do if i can just to clarify i, I like what you have put up there regarding the verges yeah. you know the dust bowl that our, our area is is looking yeah. anywhere from if you are in an older area or the new one uh, i just want to provide clarity to you that we have put forward over about a year or two ago, we are doing an urban serv services yeah. review in depth yeah. in urban services yeah. review. So we are doing that. We've yeah. listened to you and this council has actioned that. What I also do want to provide some clarity to you on is our asset management, the curb, the infrastructure, the footpaths yeah. that you that you spoke about, yeah. which obviously I share your um, sentiment towards. Yeah. We have actually just actioned this year new technology of vehicles with cameras and buggies with cameras that will be going along our assets in our urban areas yeah. and will actually be pinpointing defects in our infrastructure. What that will provide us with is an in-depth database of stuff like this where we need to do repair and I hope as a, as a result we have better infrastructure. So please yeah. take from here, we, we have actually actions, um, two of them um, right now, all right? So walk away from here that we are listening yeah. to you, but I respect your views when it comes to that park as well. Thanks guys, cheers. Any other questions for Mr Tippett? If not, thank you Mr Tippett. Thank you. Sorry. For your presentation. We move on to item 12, motions without notice. Are there any motions? We move on to item 13, motions on notice. Manaparo Downs speed limits on page 10. Councillor Coppins. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm just moving the motion that council staff undertake a traffic analysis on Smithham, Demonu, Moss and Field Roads at Manaparo Downs and provide a report to Council on recommended speed limits, recognising the nature of the urbanised environment for each of the roads. Now, the reason I'm moving this motion today, I've been contacted by a number of residents in this immediate area. Although there are not currently a great deal of houses located in this vicinity, there are a number of families with very young children who are quite concerned about these particular roads having a 100 kilometre speed limit in, in, in what is, deemed, what is um, zoned a residential area. These families have very young children and they are too frightened to even take these children for a walk around their area with the speeds of these drive, these, this traffic coming through at 100 kilometres on roads that I can only say are probably substandard. I've, I've, I've worked this motion 
in very close uh, communication with the CEO, Mr. Grain. I, I, admit, I originally drafted a motion quite different to what this particular one is. It's with my communication with Mr. Mr. Green that we've come to what we have. And this, this area is rapidly growing. There currently are a number, I think there's three, maybe four properties in this area that are either sale or either already sold or that are waiting settlement. And there is a developer that has just snapped up a 40 acre allotment at the end of Smitham Road. I admit that there are a number of uh, areas of this, this area that are, are currently still dirt road, but these are council controlled roads, but DIT actually set speed limits on all roads. So this is the first, first part of sending a, sending a letter to DIT and requesting a speed limit change more to, a, to, a, to a speed that is more appropriate for a residential area. I hope my colleagues support this motion tonight and we put things in motion to move, move to the next step. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coffins. Councillor Ollie Zand, you seconding the motion? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Um, I would like to speak. Yes, go for it. Yeah. Um, so um, I would just like to find out before I um, go ahead um, with further, um, can someone uh, comment um, on the uh, traffic analysis um, on those roads, um, if there is already a plan to actually undertake such analysis before actually this resolution, or, uh, this um, council um, motion or resolution, I should say. Um, was there yeah. any Mr. prior prior this um, motion? Mr. Denier. Is there a plan? Um, we had planned a traffic count on Smitham uh, as a result of a CRS that's received. Um, oh, okay. So this is not like prior receiving the uh, petitions. Um, there was no plan to actually do something in that area so with regards to analysis of the traffic to clarify the the crs the customer service uh, request that was received uh, was in relation to heavy vehicles moving through smithen to access an adjoining residential development uh, that triggered uh, council staff to uh, propose a, a traffic count to occur on smithen okay all right um Right. Um, I'm just uh, thinking as well. Um, so obviously, from from that motion, if this goes ahead, um, this would obviously go to debt. Is is that right? This would be forwarded to debt. What's the process? If you can just clear that up for us, Mr. Dane. Thank you. Uh, to to clarify the process, what we would be undertaking is a traffic analysis. Uh, from there, we would. Um, we would need to apply to to DIT to reduce that speed limit based on the outcomes of that analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and I would just to um, clarify as well with Councillor Coppins, is this something um, that we're not looking at to doing in the next what three months or four months? Uh, do you have a time frame for this? There is no time frame in the motion, but Councillor Coppins, if you do have some intent or something please, that you yeah, please have raise, please raise it now or it perhaps something that he has communicated to the community any comment um, at all councillor coppins okay all right okay thank you then councillor baker Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a question, if I could. Um, Demenu and Field Roads, I heard Councillor Coppin mention 100 kilometres an hour. What is the speed limit on those roads? I wasn't aware that the City of Playford had 100k roads. Mr. Dean. Thank you. Through the Chair. Uh, as a result of no posted speed limit uh, in that location, uh, the, the, the speed limit allowed is up to 100 kilometres per hour, acknowledging the need to to drive to the conditions. Right. Thank you. 
Councillor Smallsmith. Yes, thank you. A question, if I may, before you leave, the, leave there. Um, how many houses are there on Smitham Road, and does Smitham go down to Dalkeith? Is that where they come out, or do they go along Smitham, then come down Field or Dimanu? I, I need to know that, please. Mr Jaren. <laughs> uh, I would need to take the, that on notice as to the number of dwellings uh, on Smitham currently. Uh, it is limited. Um, in its current state, acknowledging it is located within a growth area and we're expecting a, a greater density of housing over, over the growth. Uh, to clarify, Smitham proceeds up to Dowkeith Road. Uh, it then takes a bend at Field Road, Field Road being an unsealed road. The reason I'm asking that is because three years ago, when I was standing for election, I did that area and there are only 16 homes in the whole of that area. So I, I would like to know how many more homes are in that area now, because I didn't know there was any development along Smitham Road. I might just, with the council's indulgence, I'm not sure if this is possible with our governance team here, but is there a possibility of getting a Google map up to give some councillors the opportunity to actually um, see the areas we're talking about. Not necessarily a satellite, but just a basic where this is in, in terms, as I think I did, I was watching a few facial reactions about the speed limit and co, and I think a few members just need a pleasant prompt on just what's uh, there um, and where we're talking about. If councillors are happy with that, that will aid you in this discussion and debate. I'll give you the call in a moment, Councillor Norris. Just, we'll just get the map up so everyone's clear. And it saves everyone trying to dive on their phone or iPad to try and <laughs> Google uh, yeah. Demonu Road. <laughs> and may assist Mr Dean in answering other questions who's been put on the spot tonight. He's doing a great job. You're more than welcome to come back any time. Thank you for that, Ms. Niski. That's, that's um, in the corner, that's excellent to actually bring that up. Thank you very much for that. And can give you a bit of an idea of where we're talking about. Thank you for that uh, governance team. I think that helps uh, give some people the opportunity. Councillor Norris, I'll give you the call. Thank you. Um, look, I... <laughs> I feel that I am in support of a reduction, depending obviously on what, the, what comes back with the traffic study, but I don't think that 50 is the right answer. Like, obviously, maybe we need to reduce it, but, you know, cutting it in half is quite excessive. Um, it just makes me think, you know, if we have rural roads, people choose to live rurally, um, but if you've got only sparse housing and there's only, like, one or two houses on the road, I don't know that that necessarily justifies cutting it so significantly. Um, and then, I mean, you've answered the other questions. We've got approximately 16 homes-ish in that area. Um, I'd, I'd be interested to see, we can't really, so we'd count the numbers of cars, but we can't actually count the speed that they do, or can we? We can? Cool, thank you. I'll call Councillor Kerrison and then Councillor Time. Councillor Kerrison. Uh, thank you, Mayor Doherty. Um, I'm not sure, quite sure which of those roads are sealed and which are unsealed. Mr. Demain, just keep answering the questions. <laughs> Throw to the chair. Yeah. Uh, Smitham is, is sealed, Demenu is sealed, Moss is sealed, Field is unsealed. Okay. And I believe, sorry to clarify, Smitham south of uh, Demenu is unsealed. No worries. Oh. Right. So, so, in effect, what I'm taking from tonight is. Uh, this motion is put for us, and it's uh, I support the intention of the motion, um, but pretty much via that customer CRS, we're basically taking this work currently as it is. Mr. Dean, through the chair, uh, we were proceeding with counts on Smitham. This resolution would result in additional counts. Okay, okay yeah, fantastic. And just just the last one is um, for the unsealed roads. What's DIT's policy? on speed limiting unsealed roads? Um, 
Bruvature, um, I'd need to take a, a policy position on, on notice as to a, a specific yeah. policy of the department. Okay, thank you. I'll go to Councillor Tame, then Councillor Stroll. Councillor Tame. Thank you. I just wanted to find out, I mean, I've had a look and there's a lot of hooking uh, and uh, rubbish uh, in that area. But I wanted to find out if they're going to be developing and there's new development up that area, would they then be looking at a reduction in speeds around that area anyway, if there's going to be new development it would save on um, things for us to be doing this if um, there's going to be development in the near future. Mr Denning. For the Chair, uh, yes, as the, as the land is developed uh, and becomes a, a to, to a technical term, built up area, uh, the posted speed limit uh, uh, is then reviewed and that's where you would apply a 50 kilometre speed environment. Because at what cost would this be if we put through all of this um, for it to be assessed and, and for a reduction, there'd be a cost with administration and everything um, on council side. So would we be best leaving it until the developers put that through for change in um, speed reduction? Through the chair, uh, it isn't uh, what we're pro what the, the motion is proposed. Sorry, what the motion is proposing is for, for council to undertake a, a, an analysis. Uh, we're already seeking to undertake an analysis of Smithham. Uh, it, it wouldn't be a significant onus to add counters onto Moss and Demenu. Uh, council Stroud. If majority of these roads are sealed compared to unsealed, would a sealed road still be up to 100 kilometres per hour? It seems a bit ridiculous on a sealed road. Through the chair, without a posted speed limit uh, across uh, metropolitan Adelaide, that is uh, the case that it is up to 100 kilometres per hour. Wow. Thanks for that. Can I? Um, I've learned a, a little bit tonight about uh, posted speed limits, but with the uh, the approval of the, um, the the mover, can we look at uh, potentially including that? Not only do we just look at speed limits, but we look at the safety improvements along those associated roads. If we're going to do a broad analysis and review of those roads, why would we not put <laughs> some staff time into safety improvements? So, I'd like to. Um, if, if, uh, if he's happy to alter the, the, the motion at all, um, to amend it to include that after speed limits and safety improvements, recognising the nature of the urbanised environment for each of the roads. And if, if that is okay, I'm happy to, to support um, the, the motion. Is the mover and seconder happy for that? And that would leave of the council, people are happy with that. If they're not, we'll have to move it as amendment, but if it the leave, everybody's happy. And just to clarify, Mr. Denine, just on one of your last points, those currently four roads are in a rural area, hence why it's not an urban metro area, so hence why the unposted speed limit in a metropolitan Adelaide is 50 kilometres unless otherwise signed. So just so everyone's clear that because it's in a, zoned in a rural area, it's not signposted. If you can, with a permitting, you can do up to 100 kilometres on a rural road. Is that correct? Yeah, apologies. Uh, the the measure is um, built up versus uh, not built up. It is it is in a zoned growth area uh, for Playford North Extension, but it isn't currently a built up area. Uh, and accordingly, yeah, the, without a posted speed limit, it is up to 100 kilometres an hour. Councillor Craig. Um, yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor. I suppose given that we are a growth council and this is happening probably in other spots around our city, it might be good to to have that reassurance. I know given Councillor Coppin's introductory remarks about the young families living on some of these developing roads, uh, chances of children running out onto uh, busy, fast moving traffic, um, it would be a, a bit of um, uh, comfort to know that Council is proactively looking at this sort of thing, that we do, you know, that we do think ahead and think, well, when new housing goes in, 
do we make that part of our like our protocol to to have that mind to 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 these things because you know god forbid you know a little child runs out you know just because we're slow off the mark and you know, hope that we can be fast moving on such things where where there is a risk to to safety I only have one more question. So at this current moment in time, it's zoned in a growth area. Growth may or may not occur on a particular block. Just to be clear, can that development start, so i.e. a housing estate 20 or 30 blocks go in, is the speed limit recommendation from a developer or council or government then, or is it once that is then built up to a particular number or a particular mass, then it changes? So i.e. are we gonna get trucks running down there potentially at 100 k's an hour cement trucks and all that stuff in that area if it doesn't change. That's what I'm just trying to clarify for everybody here. For, for absolute clarity, the, the built up consideration is a measure of either street lighting um, within five metres strict, within, sorry, 100 metre separations, or it is dwellings um, within 100 metre separations. Once you're starting to increase those separate, uh, reducing those separations, that's where the consideration comes into as what is defined built up. Um, the a, an approval as such doesn't necessarily trigger a speed reduction that would need to run through an analysis and an application through to the department for that reduction to occur. It's a bit of clarity for me, and I think for everybody else as well. Are there any other councillors wishing to speak on this motion? If not, then Councillor Coppins has the right to close if he wishes. Uh, thank, thank you for the um, debate on this issue. Um, we need to remember that these, it, this area is actually bordered by Coventry Road, Davern Road, and I believe Seven Heath Road, all of which have uh, maximum speed limits of 80 kilometres an hour. For something off of an 80 kilometre zone to be a 100 kilometre zone is ridiculous. I'm quite happy to take on board the alterations that my colleague Councillor Marsh suggested. I can't remember, recall exactly how, how it was worded, but I'm quite happy to put them in if Councillor Marsh would like to put it out there again. Yep, I'm quite happy with that being be included. Um, but thank you. All right, councillors, we have the motions before us. I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Move on to item f items 14, committee reports. Item 14, one, stormwater management plans. Councillor Halls. Move the staff recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Halls. Is that find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Strowett. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Strowett? Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. We have to item 14.2, Gawler River Floodplain Management Authority Cost Share Model and Attachments. Councillor Rentoulis. You're happy to move the recommendation, staff recommendation, Mr Mayor? Do you wish to speak to it? No, I don't. Thank you, Councillor Rentoulis. Is it find a seconder? Councillor Halls. Yep, I'm happy to second that, thanks. Do you wish to speak? No, thank you. It's Any other councillor wishing to speak or make comment? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour, those against, I declare that carried. Move to item 14.3, surveillance cameras, page 165. Councillor Halls. Ooh. Okay, no, uh, Councillor Stroll. Happy to move the committee recommendation, please. Do you wish to speak on it? Yeah. No, is it fine a seconder? Councillor Intoulis? Yeah. Are you happy to second? Yeah, happy to second, yeah. Mr Mayor. Uh, any other councillor wishing to speak or Councillor Intoulis wishing to speak as a seconder? Um, yeah, we're just uh, merely receiving the report. Can I just get yes. one of these, our staff members just to come to the front and just provide their perspective on the report? Just a very quick s summary because my understanding of the report is that it hasn't really made too much of a difference in Salisbury. I just want to know our perspective on it. Yep, uh, Mr Langman. Through the chair. 
Um, uh, as per the, the report, um, it doesn't appear that the trial that Salisbury's undertaken has been very successful. Uh, they were initially quite enthusiastic about what it might achieve, but um, there's been a number of reviews of, of that work that they've done. Um, the evidence is that there's been very little actual sort of prosecution or investigation that's come about, but there has been an extraordinary amount of staff time and cost attached to it. Um, one of the comments in the report was that over 16,000 email notifications to staff to check, and when you get to one expiation or potential expiation as a result of that, it's, it's, um, it's, it's potentially not working in the way that it, um, they might have intended although they can continue to explore uh, ways that that would, um, that would occur. So it's been moved by Councillor Stroud, seconded by Councillor Entours. Does anyone else wish to speak on the item? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? That's against, I declare that carried. Item 15.1, second budget review, 2021-22 attachments on page 171. Councillor Baker? Moves the recommendation. Moved by Councillor Baker, there's a final seconder. Seconded by Councillor, uh, a couple of you, where's the red light? Uh, Councillor Onyzans. Yes, happy to. Are there any other councillors wishing to make comment? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Item 15.2, Playford Position Paper, LGA OGM 2022. Councillor Onyzans. Happy to move the uh, staff recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Onyzans. Is it final seconder? Seconded, Councillor Small. Seconded, thank you. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Move to item 15.3, budget update report and attachments. Happy moved, to move. Moved by councillor Strowett. The final seconder, councillor Norris. Any other councillor wishing to speak? If not, then I'll put that. Those in favour? Those against? I declare that carried. Uh, we then go into item 17, confidential matters on page 202 and pursuant to section 92 of the Local Government Act 1999, an order is made that the public be excluded from attendance at the meeting with the exception of the following staff that are on the screen. And this is in accordance under sections 93B and H of the Local Government Act. Does somebody wish to move that way? Move by count. Moved by Councillor Smallwood Smith. Does it find a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Halls. Yes, please. <laughs> Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids, right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. 
South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 82592100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? Simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, 
playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment. It's the right thing to do. And it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and well-being. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 82592100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Support your local theatre and arts industry and enjoy a show at the Shedley. Playford's iconic Shedley Theatre is bringing a great selection of local and national performances to Elizabeth this winter. For more information on their upcoming shows, visit theshedley.com.au or call 8256 0500. Have you visited the Stretton Centre on Peachy Road, Manopara? Designed to support growth in the city of Playford, the centre offers dedicated workspaces from less than $10 per day, state-of-the-art event and meeting spaces for hire, a complimentary business support service to help you upskill, apply for grants and grow, workshops, networking and training for young kids right through to adults and the city of Playford Library. Contact our team for a tour on 8254 4666 or visit the Stretton Centre at 307 Peachy Road, Manapara. Did you know you can view your rates notice online at Playford Online Services? 
simply register for an online account by visiting our website at playford.sa.gov.au and searching Playford Online Services. Once you've registered, you can request to have your rates notice delivered to your device or computer. Prefer to watch and learn? We have created some simple videos to show you how to register for an account, view your rates notices and set up direct debit. Simply search for Playford Online Services via the Playford website for more information. That website again, playford.sa.gov.au. Are you building a house or doing some renovations that require planning approval? The way you apply for planning approval has changed, along with some of the rules of the Planning and Design Code. South Australia's new planning system covering the entire state was implemented on the 19th of March this year. So to find out more, visit plan.sa.gov.au. Did you know your food scraps should go in the green bin or a home compost system? It's better for the environment, it's the right thing to do, and it's easy. Fight food waste by putting all your food scraps, peels and leftovers in the green bin. To find out more, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash waste. Feedback about our city's future from our community is really important. It helps us prioritise your needs when planning services, projects and other initiatives. A convenient way to have your say and stay in the loop on any upcoming consultations is by registering your details on our Engagement Hub website at playford.engagementhub.com.au. We look forward to hearing from you. Want to get involved in your community? There are so many benefits in becoming a volunteer at City of Playford, including meeting new people, developing new skills, sharing your talents, improving your employability, as well as enhancing your own mental health and wellbeing. If you want to learn more about how to volunteer with us, visit playford.sa.gov.au forward slash volunteers. Time to do a big clean up around the house? We can help get rid of your unwanted items with a hard waste collection. You can book Norma to pick it up from your front yard, up to two times per financial year. To make a booking, call Norma on 8259-2100. The new My Playford mobile app is here. You can now stay up to date with the latest council news and info, set bin reminders, make online payments and send through your customer requests, all in one place and at the touch of a button. Download the free My Playford app today for your iPhone or Android device. Want to know what's happening in the community? Subscribe to our fortnightly e-newsletter, Playford News, at playford.sa.gov.au and you'll be on top of stories, news and what's happening in Playford. It's local news for local people. Councillors, there's no other items on the agenda. I close the meeting at one minute past eight. And thank you for your attendance. Support your local theatre 